welcome or welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. For those of you who are returning, welcome back. I appreciate you so much. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Brenda and this is my Oliver who badly needs a haircut. But we are so glad you are here today as well. Today I have just my one of my regular videos for you, so I hope you enjoy it. So with all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, here's DIY number one. So for this DIY, I am going to take my Waverly chalk paints in the color Elephant and Plaster. I'm gonna use those. I'm also going to use these little sticker dots that I got from Dollar Tree. These uh, door hinges I also ordered from Amazon, which I'll have in my Amazon store. This doorknob I got from Dollar Tree. Uh, these a key that I got from Amazon as well. <clears throat> and then these three wood planks that I got from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. And I also created this saying on Cricut. I will have it in my description box um, if you would like to use it. And then these jumble wood craft sticks. So I'm starting this project off by taking off all the hangers and then I am just using, I believe I used about five of these jumble craft sticks to connect those three boards together. And I am just using some wood glue and some hot glue. And again, the wood glue is for permanent hold. The hot glue is for the immediate hold. And then once I am done with that, um, I am going to turn it over and paint it with my plaster chalk paint. Although I had too much wood glue here and you see I had to wipe it off. Um, if you see that little piece of tape on the top, the blue tape, <clears throat> that's because this that one board was kind of warped and I was having a really hard time getting those to line up. As you can see on the right hand side, it's a bigger gap and that's because that board was warped. So I'm taking my elephant chalk paint after um, my board was dry and I am just distressing all around the edge and then I just real super lightly distress in the middle. And after that, I'm going to put these door hinges on and I'm just using some super glue, some the super glue, the gel super glue. And I'm just putting that all around the, um, where the holes were not around the solid areas, that's a better way to say it, and then just glued it onto the front. And then I am just using my transfer tape here to, um, to get my wording onto my picture. Now, I don't normally show you guys all of this. Um, I was realizing when I was doing this the other day that Maybe you guys like to see this so that you can kind of see how the Cricut works. So let me know in the description box or in the comment box if you would rather me show you more of how I use my Cricut. Um, but <clears throat> to let you know, I do have issues with it like a lot of people. So if you have issues, don't feel bad because you're going to see right here. My P was not coming up and that transfer tape kept sticking to me, sticking to itself. And oh my goodness, I was having a heck of a time, but I finally got it. <laughs> so after that, I went ahead and used some more of this super glue to um, connect that back hinge to the back of the sign. After that, I took my uh, sticker dots and I am painting eight of them with my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. And then I'm just going to hot glue them over the holes on those hinges just to cover it up. And I actually, I kind of like it with the holes. I probably should have left them alone. It doesn't, it kind of looks cool. But anyways, I did cover them up with those little dots and it makes it look like nails in there. Then I took that doorknob. My husband went and cut it with the Dremel. Um, I would not recommend using a Dremel to cut it because it ended up breaking the glass. So he said a hacksaw, hacksaw would probably work better to get that screw off. But I just painted it with my elephant chalk paint um, and then glued it on just like you saw. And then I painted that key with the elephant chalk paint and put it on the front as well. And then I just wrapped the top with some twine about three or four times. I added a hanger and um, then that was all there is for this part. And then I'm going to add a bow to the top part as well. And if you have, if you recreate this and you're using thicker boards, you probably could use the, uh, the screw on the back of that knob, but because this, 
these boards are so thin, it, it was way too long. It's a really long screw actually. So that's uh, mainly why I had my husband cut it because it was actually super long. <laughs> I think it really is meant for a dresser or a door or something because it was a huge, a huge screw. But anyways, here I am. I just made that bow and I just hot glued it on. And there it is. You have to let me know what you think about this. I just love this saying and I just, I don't know. I love the thought of it. Let me know what you think. <clears throat> so if you'd like to follow me on social media or see all the accounts I'm affiliated with, you can look at my link tree that's in the description box below. And then here is DIY number two. So for this DIY, I am going to take some of these cotton po pods that I got from Dollar Tree. I created this little saying on my Cricut and I got this truck from Dollar Tree and then I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paints in the color white, ink, and crimson. And then I'm going to start off by removing the hanger and using my heat gun to remove the raised um, fenders. And I just really gently, because it's thin wood, you don't want to break it. So I'm just doing this real gently with my Cricut spatula. And then I grab this other um, scraper because it kind of gets a little bit more area. But um, the Cricut spatula really does work good for this. But I'm just kind of working it until I can get it removed. But if you do this, just be very careful because those can break easily. Then I'm just going to go through and paint this truck red <clears throat> and I'm just painting in between the the slats there of the back of the truck and then I'm going to paint everything but the tire part and the round part uh, in the tire in the middle of the tire. <laughs> I'm not going to paint those red but I'm going to paint the rest of the truck with my crimson red color. And then once I have that all painted, I do end up painting the back of it as well. And then I'm going to use my um, white chalk paint to paint the middle part of the truck there, of the tires. And I'm sorry you see my lunch there. My husband brought me my lunch because I was too busy to go make it myself. <laughs> and then I use my ink to uh, paint in the, um, what do you call that wood piece? I just said it. Anyways, the wood piece is there on the back of the bed of the truck. And then I also painted the fenders with that black as well. And then painted the actual tire area with the black. Then I'm using my wood glue and hot glue again on those fenders. And then I'm going to put them back in place where they came off of. <clears throat> and then again, I used too much wood glue. As you see it seeping in there. <laughs> and wipe it off again and then after that I am just going to take my little saying and I'm going to put this on the door of the truck it says cotton pick and blessed which I thought was really cute I actually saw something similar to this on um, Pinterest and wanted to use that saying and then I'm just taking a sponge uh, paintbrush here and I'm just doing a little bit of I guess you could say distressing with my ink color I'm just going around all the openings and then I ended up going around the edge all the way around and I just really think it helped make that truck pop I don't know there was just something about it and then after that I went ahead and hot glued those cotton pods to the back now I took these pieces came off of I think one of my my pumpkin decors from Dollar Tree this last fall. And um, when I pulled off a pumpkin from it, it kind of ripped it. So I cut it in half because I didn't need it, two of them. And I glued them together and I painted them and painted over where it tore off some of that top cover of it. And I just hot glued that truck to it. And now I just put a little bow over that hole. And that's all there was for this one. I think it came out really cute. You have to let me know what you think about this one as well. Okay, it's time for the celebration of your recreations. And I just want to give a shout out to Lydia who sent me pictures of these beautiful, adorable little 
Easter DIYs that she did. You did an amazing job, Lydia. Thank you so much. And if you want me to showcase your recreations, make sure you just send me some pictures in the email that's listed in my description box and I'd be happy to share them. Here's DIY number three. So for this DIY, I'm going to take one of these little crates from Dollar Tree. I'm going to take some um, floral foam from Dollar Tree and this boxwood greenery from Walmart as well as these mini mums that I got this fall from Dollar Tree. I bought these little um, dowel, what do they call them, dowel caps from a garage sale this weekend for 25 cents, but they came from Hobby Lobby. And then that handle I got from Amazon, it's in my Amazon store, that uh, cutting board from Dollar Tree, and then this um, wall covering stuff from Dollar Tree. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> anyway, so here I am just kind of measuring it uh, against that um, cutting board, and then I'm cutting it down to fit on top of the cutting board. And the nice thing about this is it has all those little areas that kind of help you keep cutting in a straight spot. Straight line. Oh my goodness, you guys. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to start off by painting that chalk, no, that cutting board with my chalk paint in the color plaster. And after that, I painted the little crate as well. I painted all of the sides, I, I except for I didn't paint the back and then I am painting those little dowels and I just put them on some painters tape so that they stuck and then it's best to if you try this technique to paint the bottom first because it, it's hard to get the groove little grooves under the big part of it um, if you did the big part first so that's why I started on the bottom and then I am doing some dry brushing now you see me do dry brushing all along that um, cutting board and that's only because it was splattering and I wasn't going to uh, dry brush it but with the splatters I thought well I guess I better so <laughs> it's going to be the back part of it anyways so anyways I'm just going around that crate and dry brushing it and then I dry brushed the little feet and then here I'm just using hot glue and I removed the backing of this um, what do they call them these self-adhesive wall decals and um, then I just added it to that hot glue and then I trimmed it up and I'm just hot gluing that crate in front of it I'm using my super glue here again to add this knob to the front of my crate and a little bit of hot glue on the end for that immediate hold and then I'm just going to add um, wood glue and uh, hot glue to the bottom of those cow dap dowel caps oh my gosh uh, and I'm using them as the feet then I added the uh, styrofoam into this crate and then I'm just putting some of the boxwood greenery in there just kind of placing it around that piece was a little lot big taller so I thought it'd be better in the back then I'm just using um my little wire clippers there and cutting off some of my uh, mums, my mini mums, and I'm just adding them. And now I was originally going to just do the boxwood, but I thought with that red truck we needed to add a little bit of red to to the my set of DIYs. So, and I, I love red anyways. It's my second favorite color, so I'm always happy to add red. So as you can see, I was just doing some dry brushing around that piece, and I just really think that really helped make it look older and pop, and there it is. I really love how this came out. You'll have to let me know in the comment box below what you think about this one as well. Okay, DIY number four. <laughs> so for this DIY, I'm going to use this shelf. I am going to use these bamboo sticks I got from Amazon. I am going to use my chalkboard paint I got from Dollar Tree, this chalk couture st uh, stencil, and this. Um, these are placemats I got from Walmart this last uh, around Christmas time, actually. And then my chalk paste in the color bright white and pesto, and I do not use my crimson red. So I am going to start off by painting, excuse me, that shelf with my chalkboard paint. And then I'm going to fuzz my transfer. This is the first time I've used this transfer. 
So I fuzz about four or five times that way it doesn't adhere so strongly to the board that it stretches it when I pull it up. So once I have it all um, fuzzed, I'm gonna place it onto that shelf right in the middle. And then I'm going to use my um, pesto and I'm gonna color in or paste in those leaves. Now I should have done this with a method that we do where we do half of the transfer and then we pull it up and then we do the other half. That uh, keeps your paste from sticking to the transfer when you pull it up. But I thought I could be faster and wasn't thinking about the fact that my fan was going in here because it was kind of warm and I think that that dried my paste um, onto my transfer. And so you'll see when I lift it, some of it pulls off with the transfer. So um, whenever you think if you're doing something, if you're doing chalk couture and you're doing something that is a little more detailed or doing extra colors, you want to do the, I think they call it pull and peel or I can't remember what they call it, but it, you just basically you do like half of it. You pull that part up, the transfer for that part up, and then you lay it back down and finish because um, you can kind of see there, you can see on the B and the L, it didn't look very well and some of the greenery didn't come out, but it still works. I just, I touched, I was able to touch it up with a small paintbrush. So here I am just going around with those um, little bamboo sticks. I had painted them black as well. And I'm just going around the edge of this placemat and hot gluing them in place. And then after I get that all done, I'm going to add this sign. I'm just gonna hot glue it uh, right there in the middle. And then I'm just going to add some half beads that I got from Amazon in those little holes there. And then add some boxwood greenery and a bow. And I just love the way this came out. If you are new here, I just wanna say welcome again. My name is Brenda, in case you didn't catch it the first time. And I'm so glad you're here. If you like today's video and you like home decor on a budget, thrift flips, holiday decor, and gift ideas, then I would invite you to hit that red subscribe button, become part of our family, and then let me know in the comment box below that you're here and what was your favorite um, DIY today. And then make sure you hit that thumbs up and for those of you that are returning, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and comment so that way it lets YouTube know you like my video and it will um, promote it out there even more. I really would appreciate it. So here, as you see, I just made my regular bow where I made the um, awareness ribbon sign and scrunch it up in the middle and then use some twine to keep it together. And here I'm just um, hot gluing the the boxwood and then I'm using my little spatula to get it all in there um, so that I don't burn my fingers <laughs> and that's all there was for this one and oh no nope, I'm sorry I forgot I did use some braided twine that I have in my in my Amazon store <clears throat> and I'm just making a hanger so I tied a knot on both ends and hot glued it to the back and there it is and I love the way this came out you have to let me know what you think about it even with the little issues with my chalk couture it still looks a little rustic and I, I still I love it I love the way it came out so here's the final reveal of all four guys make sure you let me know in the comment box which was your favorite make sure and send me some pictures of your recreations if you'd like me to showcase them and if you're new and haven't hit that subscribe button yet make sure you hit that subscribe button and then don't forget guys to hit that like and comment and with all that being said I will be back again on what is today um the I think my next video is on the first so <laughs> just can't have those notification notification bells set so with all of that being said <laughs> I will see you on the next one bye bye